two-way shooter action with Silkworm. Silkworm is a 1988 game by Tecmo and released on the home systems in 1989, ported by the Cells Curve and released by Virgin Mastertron. The arcade game, I'm afraid it's not one I ever managed to play, but it's this kind of regarded as the follow-up, but unofficial follow-up, to Swift. And you can either fly a helicopter and shoot the baddies, or drive a jeep, or have two-player action with both of them at once. Starting on the C64 and you select which one of the two vehicles you want to control and off we go with the helicopter. As you can see, unlike Swift, this is a horizontal scroller and you go along the landscape, it looks fairly traditional in one player mode. And there's a few differences between the versions which you will see. If you've got two player, you can also drive the Jeep along the ground which doubles up your firepower. There are occasional power-ups as well that either give you invulnerability or you can blast the invul invulnerability clouds to uh, blast everything on the screen. And also there's power-ups to double up your firepower and give you points as well. Spikes here on the C64 are fairly small, and that's an invulnerability cloud. And as I say, if you shoot that when it comes towards you, it gives you a kind of smart bomb effect, as you can see there. No music as you go along, but there's beefy sound effects on the SID chip. As I say, in bug player mode, it looks very conventional, and we're reaching the end of level one, and here we go, there's a fairly big baddie. This is the smallest, I think, of all the versions of the end of level baddies. C64 doesn't really have those massive end of level baddies. Fairly easy to defeat as well, and you get your bonus at the end of level. And on to level two, there are 11 levels on all the systems I've seen so far. Across the spectrum, this version is ported by Random Access. And here you go, you get to play the, the helicopter and the Jeep at the same time on the spectrum you either in one player mode control both at once or in two player mode control them independently this is quite fun it doubles up your firepower and one thing i noticed on the spectrum version and the amstrad version as well is there's less ground based obstacles they've they've tried to think this through that there's baddies on the ground but not quite as many difficult things to jump over one thing you'll notice, and we'll see this on the versions we get to select which craft you want to play, and this is the end of level on the Spectrum, nice big baddie. The thing you'll see is that it's harder to play as the Jeep only, oh, big missile, harder to play as the Jeep only as it is to play as the helicopter only. Note on the Specky, the firing cannon can also go up and behind you as well, which I've not seen on some of the other versions. Nice soundtrack on the opening screen of the CPC, same as the Spectrum, in effect. And again, you have to select which controls you want for the Jeep and the helicopter. So if you're one player, you've got to select, say, for example, joystick zero and joystick zero, because if you select, say, joystick and then keyboard, the other vehicle, you won't be able to control it unless you actually got your ambidextrous and can control two things at once. Amstaff version is very colorful smaller screen and does suffer from a little bit of slowdown especially when you compare it to the spectrum version if you've only ever played the cpc version you'll think it's perfectly fine as i did when you play them back to back we play it back to back the spectrum version the speed of the spectrum version becomes apparent not that the amstrad version isn't fun because it is especially in two player mode i used to play this with my friends and we used to have an enormously fun time playing, one of us playing the helicopter, one of us playing is the Jeep. And one of the things about the Jeep, as I say, if you're playing this in a system where you have um, the choice of one or the other and not both as you do here, it becomes a bit more like an army moves game because you have to jump obstacles. 
on the CPC and Spectrum, there's no obstacles to jump, really, because the small amount of obstacles there are, the helicopters downward fire will destroy it for you. And there we go, double up our firepower and onto the big end of the level baddie. And again, a lovely big baddie on the CPC here. For a game that's defied by its speed on the arcade, the CPC version is just a little bit lacking. Over to the ST, where oddly you can select to control both vehicles at once. And when we come to the Amiga, you'll see that you can't do that on that system. Weird difference there. Here we go, and there's a nice bit of speed on the ST. We've got our tip trim pal, and we kill the goose. What's more, it's called the goose, which is an armoured plane. Oddly enough, I think the on um, the ST, the end level baddies are slightly smaller than the Spectrum Amstrad version, although probably bigger in pixels. Sound effects, I don't know if it's just me, sound a little bit more weedy than the Spectrum and CPC versions on the ST. It's nice and speedy though. What's not weedy is the music and sound effects on the Amiga version. There's some really nice music here, again programmed by Random Access. And you cannot, unlike the ST, select the same control to control both craft at the same time just won't let you and the cheat on the Amiga version by the way and yes I am using an infinite live cheat on the Amiga is scrap 28 which this being 1989 I can imagine is a reference to the uh, infamous the awful section 28 legislation Level 2 on the CPC and we get these Death Star baddies and everything really comes to a crawl when there's so much going on on the screen. They've reduced the screen size on the CPC to give themselves a bit more memory and to make keep it moving fast. But we cut straight over the Spectrum here and the Specky version is, is much faster. Even though there's still slowdown, it's nowhere near as prevalent. But then, then the Spectrum's throwing around a lot less screen memory than the Z80 and the CPC has to. Shot of good fun though. One difference with the C64 version over the Spectrum Amstrad is you get different end level baddies. You get Burt Tank here at the end of level two. And it, it will alternate between Burt Tank and a helicopter. Uh, but on the Spectrum Amstrad, you just get a helicopter at the end of each level. There's no MSX version for this game, which is odd for a 1989 game. There's quite a few games around this time that managed to get MSX conversions, even if they were converted from the Spectrum in one day. There is a Nintendo Entertainment System version, though, whatever that happens to be. Level 3 on the Amiga, no copper effects in this game. You think they might have had a few copper effects in the background? It's none of that. Graphically, it looks very similar to the ST. And you, on most of these versions, you get this flashing when the end of level baddie is near. And you can shoot some of their cannons. So that's something to bear in mind. Oh, and we destroyed him there. Wave 4 on the ST, as because it's graphically very similar, but it just has that... That I cannot stress, of all the Amiga games I look at, how much the gun and explosion effects rattle the bottom end of my speakers in a way most other games don't. Really nice. Like I say that's on the Amiga, not the ST, which is just like Space Invader effects. And on the 16-bit versions, you get these things in the background where you can see waves of helicopters approaching. It's something you see in later shoot 'em ups from Japan. This isn't a shoot -em up many people talk about, really. I think it's rather forgotten about in favour of later games. But do you know what? The ST and Amiga versions of these are 
fairly faithful to the arcade and do present a, a decent challenge. There's, there's not much new here. I say there's not much new. There's a new variety of baddies here and you get smaller baddies spawning at the back of bigger baddies. I guess because it was bettered by so many other later games, it's been forgotten about. Wave 4 on the Spectrum. There's no colour clash in the Spectrum. It's, they've got lots of colour into the game, but the main play area is always monochrome. But you don't really notice that. There's lots of other colour on the screen. I think if it was entirely monochrome, then you'd have a problem. I mean, the, the ground area there is colour. The score area is colour. It's just the main area where you can fly your helicopter and drive your jeep is kept mono to avoid colour clash. It's quite effective, and it means the graphics are very clear, and you can see there I could fire behind on my Jeep, but as far as I'm aware, I don't think you could do that on the ST and Amiga versions. Level 7 on the C64, this lovely background there, and you can, uh, so you can shoot those things to get a smart bomb effect, and, you, and, on, and here on the C64, like the 60 mit versions, you can shoot those pillars out the way you the Spectrum and Amstrad versions are somewhat cut down in the number of baddies and things that happen and can be a little bit repetitive. I mean, all these. This is the kind of game that is quite repetitive anyway. But the Spectrum and Amstrad versions do suffer from that a little bit more, whereas you do get different things cropping up on the C64 to an extent, and you do get these backgrounds as well, which liven things up. But the difference, as I say, from the Spectrum and Amstrad versions is you can only play as one character at a time, not two. So back on the CPC and managed to shoot the Gazelle-type aircraft there. And off we go. There's another end-of-level helicopter. Very easy to destroy these. Just hit them with a lot of firepower. You can usually kill them off before they fire anything. And they don't seem to get any harder as well. You can always shoot them with the same number of bullets, as far as I'm aware. They do not ramp up the difficulty. There you go. Picked up the invincibility shield there. Last for different lengths of time on the different versions. Oh, I didn't... I tried to get the Jeep on that, but didn't quite work. And, and my criticism of being able to have both the Jeep and the Van Rover type thing at the same time is that you can basically when, once you've got double shots for both of them you can basically out firepower everything the only thing to watch out for is some of the rocket things that launch from the right hand side of the screen that if you're too far over they can catch you out but you can see here I'm just managing to clear everything as it as it comes towards me, no trouble at all. It's four sets of bullets heading in the enemy's direction. And it's not like a game like Gradius, where when you get more firepower, the game ramps up difficulty, and then when you lose that firepower, it brings it down again. No, it's always the same difficulty level. And that, those things are the rockets that you have to watch out for. They see less of them on the Spectrum Amstrad version than you do on some of the other versions, probably because they need to whiz past at quite a speed. Wave 10, second to last level on the Amiga. And here comes Burt Tank, which you only ever see on the C64, ST and Amiga versions. You just have to shoot him enough times. And you, if you, it, it can be difficult to hit the missiles that coming towards you, so you can't always rely on hitting them. On the arcade, Silkworm infamously loops around. There is no ending. But on the home versions, there is 11 levels, and you get a congratulations at the end of the game. But we'll see that in a minute. This is the final level. And this level is actually quite challenging. As I say, I'm on infinite lives so I don't have to worry about it too much. And Wikipedia says only the Amiga ST and N NES versions actually have an ending. Shall we see? Shall we see, Wikipedia? Shall we see which versions have an ending? So here we are. What you have to do at the end of the Amiga version 
is to destroy this kind of shimmery thing in that bit on the right hand side of the screen which keeps on launching enemies at you and the thing is the enemies are a bit of a distraction because you destroy them but you need to actually hit behind them to the tv set thing with interference on the screen that launches bubbles at you that's the best way to put it and there we go no thought i'd done it bit hectic isn't it uh, getting some hits in there come on using auto fire because frankly i'm old enough now that my fingers hurt if you can mash and fire buttons go oh, i'm gonna get them in there yeah that's gonna do it isn't it probably a hundred shots or something ridiculous needed to finish it off we done it we done it are we there yay we've done it that's the amiga version completed one thing to note on the c64 version is when your points at the top reach one million it ceases to count and then starts putting the points on player two I think I probably need to press space or fire or something. There we go. Nice. And history records... No, hang, hang on, hang on. And history records that during these 11 eventful days, many lives were lost. Peace returned to the now decimated countryside. People returned to find crops ruined, churches defiled, and the village pond dried up. A meeting of the elders and pleasant peasants were held in the local pub. Luckily, everyone saw the funny side. Right, let's see what happens at the end of the CPC version, shall we? Oh, look, it's another helicopter. Shall we see if there's an ending? Hmm, there is. Got a nice explosion like the Amiga. Cut down, granted, but we got the explosions. Or fireworks, or I don't know. Don't know what we've destroyed. Looks nice, though. And there we go, Wikipedia, we have a game ending. And that is the end of the C64 version, less dramatic than the Amiga. And no explosions either, like the CPC. But rather a lot of points, and you can see it's piling up on player two. Google knows what happens if you're playing two player, where the points actually go. Because we're on one million, nearly 400,000 now. The game can't count that high. Silkworm, a game that's basically been eclipsed by so many other games since and has been a little bit forgotten about. It's not as sexy as vertically scrolling shoot em ups either, like Swiv. We seem to be more fondly remembered. But that two player co op is pretty unique. All the 8 bit versions are pretty solid. The CPC version looks lovely, but can get a little slow, but that never bothered me when I had it on Mastertronic budget. Spectrum version is pretty nippy and plays well. C64 version is closer to the 16-bit versions, few more features, and of course that hardware scrolling and hardware sprites really do help. On the 16-bit versions, well, the Amiga is slightly better because it just has that thumping, and I really do mean thumping audio. They've got the bottom end on those sound effects really spot on. On my studio speakers, it's really thumping the bottom end when there's explosion. It sounds so good. And the ST version sounds a little bit pathetic by comparison. Gameplay wise, they're identical. Other than on the ST version, you can control the helicopter and the Jeep at once. On the Amiga version, as far as I can see, on the version I have, it's one or the other not both. You have to have two players in order to play both at the same time. I think Silkworm's a pretty good shoot em up and one that's sadly been forgotten about. Certainly it's worth checking out. Can get a little bit repetitive on the Spectrum and the Amstrad and frankly I'd play any of the versions we've seen today.